Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day out there today. Before we get started with today's video, I want to thank everybody. We're at 22,000 subscribers. This channel just keeps growing and it's all because of you. Also, I want to remind you that you can become a member right now on eBuzz Central for just 99 cents a month. The MVP, VIP, and Pro versions will officially be gone in seven days. And all those perks will drop over to the 99 cent eBuzz Central member. It's an easy way to support the channel you like and also support content that you like. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And having said that, I want to send a shout out to my two newest members, which is Balkables and Desideria Iotuned. Hopefully I didn't mess those pronunciations up. If I did, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. And thank you so much for liking the channel enough to want to support it. If you're a follower of my channel, you know that I use a lot of laptops for things that I do. And now I'm doing everything pretty much on a Tuxedo Pulse 15 Gen 2 laptop. That's what I'm running my businesses with. Uh, it's also what I'm doing most of the things that I do on my YouTube channel with. And I did have a, uh, a desktop tower for the longest time. And it was just too big for me. I didn't need it. It took up too much space. And in pretty much anything I needed to do, I could throw on a laptop. But today, we're going to be installing a Linux distro on what I think is a great little mini PC that's going to be replacing what I used to have on my desktop. And it's going to make me fire it up a little bit more as opposed to my laptop. But it's the GTR6. As a matter of fact, let's take a, a quick look at what it is. It is the B-Link GTR6 mini PC. It's a small form factor desktop tower computer with an AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX. And it can get up to 4.9 gigahertz in the processor. The faster performance can handle heavy computing tasks smoothly and better for multitasking. It's widely used for light games, image editing, browsing, watching movies, programming. The GTR Mini PC comes with integrated AMD Radeon graphics, which is 12 core, 2400 MHz, 8K quad display output via the HDMI port, which enable you to multitask with ease. You can stream 8K video, edit media, work from home, or finish your homework. And it comes with pre-installed 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM plus a 500 gigabyte Kingston 2280 PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD. It's got sufficient capacity. It can run design software smoothly and you can enjoy a large scale movie, photo, or game library. The GTR Mini PC adopts Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2 comes with dual 2500 megabyte per second LAN ports allowing you to use more networks such as software routers. Uh, you can use open WRT, DDWRT, tomato, etc. Firewalls, NAT, network isolation, etc. And it's got more functions and it's got a great warranty. It's got support for a fingerprint unlock and Cortana control if you want to use that. And also supports RTC wake up. Wake up on LAN and auto power on through your BIOS settings and network boot. And it comes with a one year worry free warranty and 24 hour customer service. And out of the box, it comes with, of course, your power cable and HDMI cable and the system itself. So let's get on over to the desktop. So we get to the desktop. It comes with Windows 11 and kind of a weird thing. I've been test driving this for about a week. For some reason, after about four days, it said activate Windows. And I don't know if it's because I changed uh, some things I'm doing with my internet. And it just wouldn't do it. But it doesn't really concern me at this point. Uh, I'm not going to troubleshoot activating it. It would probably be simple. But I'm wiping it anyway and putting Linux on it. Now, one thing I want to do is go ahead and let's go ahead and uh, control alt. And we're going to go over and look at the processes. Let's go ahead and look over here. AMD Ryzen 9. Let's go ahead and right click and let's graph that to logical processors. And as you can see right that it gives us 16 of them right there. So we've got 8 cores, 16 logical processors. Uh, on memory we've got 28. I actually got 32 but Windows always does this. It shows me 28. I don't know why. And it'll be interesting once I get Linux on here just to see what it shows I have uh, memory wise. And it shows at rest with OBS open in the background, of course, that I'm using four gigabytes of RAM. So I'll enjoy having all that extra RAM back once I get Linux on it. Now, the biggest question I had for myself is, if I'm gonna put Linux on here, what am I gonna use? And originally, I wanted to go with OpenSUSE. 
but then thinking about it because I want to give you more videos on what this little system can do and I'm going to make sure I put a link in the description below so you can go over to the website and take a look at the system yourself that I want to try to do some gaming and things like that on it uh, so I give you a uh, an overall feel of what you can do on this piece of hardware so I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and throw Nabara on it it comes pre-packaged out of the box with pretty much everything you need well another reason I want to go with Nabara is one I've got my tuxedo laptop which has tuxedo OS on it which is a derivative of Ubuntu I've got uh, my Librem 14 has Garuda on it so I've got an arch based distribution and an Ubuntu based distribution so I want to go with something different so I'm probably going to go with a Fedora base is what I thought to myself so I'm going to go with Nabara so what we're going to do real quick is I'm going to go ahead and download it and get the things needed that I need to go ahead and make a live USB on. Now the next question is, is do I go with the official ISO, which is kind of a budgy desktop environment? Do I go with GNOME or do I go with KDE? Well at present, my Tuxedo OS is running KDE. Uh, my Garuda is running KDE. So I think I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to go with the official version which I do believe is budgie. So I'm going to go ahead and go with a North America download. And it's going to give you an end user license agreement. It just basically tells you, hey, this is a hobby distribution. You understand that Nabara specific packages and code modifications should be created by end user individuals. I'm going to go ahead and agree with this so we can go ahead and get the download started. So that's right there. And while that's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and go over and download Belina Etcher. I know you guys have seen this before. But if you're somebody new to the channel that hasn't ever seen this, it doesn't take that long and I'll walk you through it. And we will go ahead and let these things download. And while those download, I'll take a little break and I'll be right back with you. Now a lot of people do ask me in comments when I cover things like Ultramarine or Nabara, why do you not just use Fedora? If it's a base of the operating system, just use the base. It will be more stable. Well, with the Nabara project, it's a modified version of Fedora with user-friendly fixes already added to it. It's a good workstation OS. Anything involving any kind of third-party or proprietary packages is usually absent from a fresh install in Fedora. A typical point-and-click user can often struggle with getting these things set up. Third-party codecs, OBS Studio, Wine Dependencies, GStreamer, third-party drivers for NVIDIA, and small package fixes are already in Nabara. So it takes a lot of the things that you would have to run and chase down after you install Fedora and already prepackages it and makes it easier for the point-and-click user. Now, there are people out there that love using Fedora and love doing that work after the install, not bashing them at all. But there are people out there that just want to install an operating system and go. And that's more of what Nabara is. So it's almost halfway finished with the download. Give me just a little bit and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so it is finished downloading. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and close out of this. And we're going to go ahead and open up Belina Etcher, which should be right there. Let's go ahead and open that up. And we agree. Let's go ahead and install that. So we'll be able to write Nabara to USB. Let's close and we're going to flash from file and we're going to flash from Nabara. Click open. Now we're going to select the target. Now is when you need to put your USB in. Okay, I put my USB in. Let's close that. Make sure it's at least 16 gigabytes. And I'm going to go with the Lexar USB. I'm going to select that one and I'm going to flash it. So we're going to let it do its thing. It says right here it's estimating 2 minutes, 84 minutes. So it jumps up and down quite a bit. So when it's done writing to the USB, I'll be right back with you. Now the flash to the USB is almost done. I wanted to go over something real quick while it's validating. This machine runs extremely quiet, guys. When I say a quiet, I mean quiet. I've rendered a little bit of uh, video on it in the last week. Uh, the fans barely kick in. It stays cool. This is really impressive. I mean, even on my older desktop, which was an old gaming PC. I can't say old. It was like 18 months old. Them fans would kick in and it would sound like, you know, a plane taking off. So, uh, this machine is very impressive. It's quiet. It runs cool. 
And, you know, the magic is, is going to be able to put something like Linux on it and just make the thing fly. Now, um, I'm getting ready to install it on here, so I'm not going to go through that because I don't have a screen capture card, but if everything goes well, I should be able to go 3, 2, 1. And just like that, the best thing to happen to the B-Link GTR 6 just happened. It now has Linux installed on it. And we're at the welcome screen of Debara. I'm not going to walk you guys through this because I've covered this in previous videos. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of me getting this Beanlink set up with Linux. Now what I do want to do is let's go look at, take a look at the system monitor. Let's go ahead and pull that up. And let's go look at resources. And it says that I'm using 3.4 gigabytes and I am running OBS in the background, but let's do something else. Let's go ahead and see what HTOP actually says that we're using. Let's go ahead and pull that up. Let's go HTOP or TOP, I'm sorry. And it actually says real RAM being used right now, not buffered or anything, is 2.7 gigabytes. As opposed to the 4.1 we were running in Windows 11, running OBS in the background. So I'm really excited. Uh, one of the main things I want to point out, even through uh, install and everything that I've been doing with this powerful little machine, the fans do not ramp up. Every now and then they might kick up for about two or three seconds, but other than that, it runs really smooth. It's a great piece of hardware, and I can't wait to really get everything set up and maybe do a gaming video for y'all on it. I think it's going to be really nice. But I've got to go through all these steps. I appreciate y'all watching the video. I'm going to put a link for the GTR 6 in the description below. And I'll put a link to Nabara if you want to give it a shot as well. I can't wait to get this all set up and do some gaming and some office work and do some videos and show you just how awesome this little machine is. It is powerful, it is affordable, and it will replace that desktop you got right now as long as you're not playing nothing but AAA games. I promise you. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like the channel. Likes keep me in YouTube's algorithm, which means if you found the information in this video helpful, somebody else out there might as well. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. You also can become a member right here on YouTube for just 99 cents a month. But that's not all. We are also on Nutrion, which you can become a member on at $2.99 a month or Odyssey, which is $4 a month. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe zip on over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go over to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.